Hi, I'm Venus Sohara and welcome to a new video. Today I'll be speaking about the power of journaling. Journaling. So there are many types of, there are many techniques of journaling, but before I get into those techniques, I want to just give you a little bit of an update. I'm so tired right now, right now all for good reason though. I've been, I've just published my book, um, fourth book, Orgasmic Manifestation in Spanish. It's in all of the bookshops. And I have been exhausted since then because I've do, I'm doing a lot of press. I've got a lot of things in the pipeline and I've, I've attracted a lot of um, new collaborations. So I'm trying to kind of manage my time, manage the growth and, and also schedule time for rest. Um, but I did think I should make a video because it's been a long time. And I really want to connect more on a level of, um, yeah, of with the things that I'm really passionate about, such as personal development, spirituality, relationships, etc. And I'm also going to be starting to offer some mentorship programs um, in different areas that I am an expert in. For example, sex toys. Um, if you are looking for a sex toy, I'm going to be offering a personal shopper service if you're looking for the perfect product. So you can actually connect with me on a call and then we can go through um, what you are looking for. Because so many people ask me, um, can I, should I buy this or this? And I'm thinking, do you know how, how much how much effort it is for me to go into my spare room with 900 products to, to test if one thing is louder than another? It's impossible. So I'm gonna kind of um, make an effort to serve you better in that way. Also, I'm gonna be offering some, um, some mentorship or webinars about orgasmic manifestation because the English version will be out in um in i think december or january a global launch it's going to be huge it's going to be so cool and um, but in the meantime if you are curious about this topic and these techniques i would love to connect with you and i can share it with you on a call i'll be sharing more about that soon so there's a lot of things happening in the background in my life and i'm attracting lots of new projects as well given the my increased media presence here in Spain. So anyway, today I want to talk about the power of journaling because I've been asked to um, host a workshop in Barcelona Journaling Weekend, which is going to be the 8th till the 10th of November. So it's in three weeks. If you want to come to Barcelona and meet me and also some other world experts in journaling, this will be a perfect opportunity. So the, the website is barcelonajournalingweekend.com. And it's going to be really interesting. And also, if you want to discover Barcelona, it is, in my humble opinion, one of the best times of year. It's still pretty warm. You might get some rainy days, but it's in general, it's the perfect weather to discover the city. Not too many tourists, There's, but there are always tourists here. And yeah, it's just uh, it's perfect, really. Oh, anyway, so let's talk about journaling. So I, the um, journaling is very powerful. The journaling I'm going to be doing is more about manifestation. So it's about writing about your ideal life in real time and connecting with the emotions and the gratitude. But I wanted to talk about my other experiences with journaling as well, because journaling is not just about manifestation. And in the Barcelona Journaling Weekend, there will be several experts who will approach journaling from a different, very different lens than, than mine. And some will be doing it for kind of more introspective um, purposes and also maybe more career purposes or yeah, anyway, different, different things anyway. But I wanted to share a couple of times in my life where journaling has been very powerful. So years ago, I used to, I used to always keep notebooks and just write my, my thoughts, my feelings and what I'd done in a day. I've done that since I was quite young. And sometimes going back to read those um, read those <laughs> texts can be very enlightening. Um, sometimes you think, oh my God, did I really fancy this guy this much, <laughs> you know? But it's also always kind of scary when you are handwriting something, I think, because um, there's always that fear of someone finding it. So I've created my own shorthand and I also draw from the four languages that I speak. So it gets to the point where you've got the obstacle of my messy handwriting plus all the different languages that are there. So it's kind of difficult if someone does find my journal to actually open it and understand it and discover the depths of my mind. So that's one fear, but I think um, that's one thing I would advise you to do is create shorthand, um, obviously hide it, but these things can always be found, which is a bit of a scary thing. Um, but it's really good to get deep when you start writing. And 
Um, something that I have found with journaling in that sense of just going over how you feel about something, it's often like therapy. Because I mean, when I've done therapy in my life, uh, let's say talk therapy, I've often gone in feeling okay or having an agenda or having an idea of how I thought the session would go. And then it something else unfolds, something else entirely that I could not have predicted. And it's like something that was underneath that needed to come out. But I didn't really know it was there. So that's, that's, that's that can happen when you are writing. Also, I think journaling is a great thing to do when you are, let's say, in a cafe alone or if you're traveling on a plane, on a train, things like that. Because oftentimes when we are in the situation of travel, instead of just thinking, I wish I was at my destination now, it's really good to make the most of that time where you can't go anywhere. You just write, you're sitting in your seat. It's a good time to reflect on your life. I remember when I was living in Madrid and I had this diary, which I'm actually looking at right now. It's, I've still got it, it's on my bookshelf. And I used to write about my, 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 my joys and my, more often my frustrations with my life at the time. And I was in a relationship that, um, with an amazing guy, we're still friends today, um, many years later, but there were certain circumstances that I was not happy with in my life. And I was very afraid to end things and start anew because that's when you leave education, university, it's the first time in your life where there's no structure that's kind of like holding you you're kind of an adult and you have to make the decisions and live with the consequences yourself you can't blame your childhood you can't blame your teachers it's you and that, that that i found that very difficult to deal with so even though i didn't like where i was didn't like my job and the relationship had limitations i was i was very 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 um afraid of um changing my life because um yeah i was very afraid of um, i didn't really know what to do didn't know who to ask for help so I used to pour out all of my thoughts, all of my fears, all of my emotions into a notebook. And I remember um, picking up this notebook a year after, or going back and reading what I'd written a year before. And I was thinking, oh my God, this thing that I'm complaining about today, I was complaining about a year ago and nothing has got better. And that was a really, um, um, it was an, an enlightening moment for me. I just thought, oh my God. And that was what sparked me to make the decision to leave Madrid with 400 euros in my bank, leave my job, leave my relationship, leave my friends, leave my job, leave my, um, leave my apartment without any notice and just go on a night train to Barcelona and to the unknown. I thought it's now or never. Um, just because I'd looked at a journal, I thought, oh my God, gotta get out now um, so that was that really is the power of journaling i completely changed my life and another time i i was in another relationship where things were not going so well and i didn't really know what to do about it i didn't i didn't lose hope but i remember i wrote um, a list of all the red flags well not just red flags red flags seems quite extreme but all the things that i was not happy with including red flags to just minor niggles and I started writing and I got to three and a half pages of things just listed. I don't know how many that would have been, maybe a hundred and something, but it was kind of a lot. And whenever I was in doubt about that relationship, I would go back and read those things again. And, and then six months after making that list, I could only identify four things that had improved in that time. Most of the things I did try and improve or did try and address, but they just weren't, it just wasn't happening. So when you see, um, that's a really good thing about journaling, because sometimes you don't know how long you've been feeling a certain way. And I think journaling can help you with that when there is a record of the emotions that you are feeling at a certain time. So that's going into the past and your kind of current life. But what's way more exciting, well, <laughs> what's way more exciting in my humble opinion is manifestation techniques. Um, I'm really into manifestation and my book is Orgasmic Manifestation, which is a topic that I talk about here on here sometimes, also known as sex magic. I'm always a bit wary about this topic because I think it's, as it's a bit esoteric, a bit witchy, people think, oh my God, that's crazy. It's kind of like law of attraction, but it's, um, it's a practice, not, um, it's, I think law of attraction is more of a kind of a state something you're doing all the time. It's about vibration and frequency alignment, whereas 
um, sex magic or orgasm manifestation is something it's a practice you do at specific times but in my chapter about the enhancers things that can enhance your practice I do I do talk about journaling because I think sometimes before uh, well it, orgasm manifestation if you're unfamiliar with it it's basically using your sexual energy um, for and, and directing it towards your goals so instead of thinking about just pleasure or connection with your partner you're thinking about paying off your debts or finding a new apartment or finding love or or attracting money attracting um, abundance new collaborations things like that it could be anything that you want any anyway. um, so it, it, it's kind of like focusing sexual energy onto a non-sexual goal and that can find that can seem very unsexy to a lot of people, but there are many. Um, I think it's uh, it's definitely something that can be learnt, and that's what I I've, I talk about in this book. English version will be out soon. Can't wait for that. But in terms of the enhancers, I do um, go into all of the different things that you can do to kind of prepare you for that moment when you are indulging in the actual practice of orgasm manifestation. And one of those things is journaling. Other things could be. Um, celebrating like you've already got it, like dancing. And uh, yeah, that's a really good thing to kind of get the emotion moving. And if you're with a partner, you could do role play, imagining that you already have the thing that you desire. But journaling for manifestation, it doesn't have to be with the orgasmic manifestation component at all. It's just that's optional. It could be um, something that can make it more powerful. But what you can do is, what is powerful about it is writing about your ideal life as if it's already happening in present tense and attaching emotion to it and gratitude and that's really powerful so um, I work with some powerful prompts such as imagine your ideal relationship what is a typical day like or um, your uh, um, your ideal career you know, things like that so it's about getting clarity on what you want in life I have a lot of techniques about how to do that um, but it's not just about what you want in life, it's why you want those things and what do those things make you feel. Because at the end of the day, it's not about manifesting certain things, you want to manifest feelings. For example, the, the job that you want, in, you want it because it's going to make you feel a certain way. For example, do you want to feel stimulated? Do you want to be busy? Do you want to feel just calm and, and just feel, um, yeah, calm and just low low tempo life or do you want to be like upbeat and traveling just to feel stimulated all the time or do you want the opposite of that so it's about really tapping into what the feeling is behind the thing that you want and that can be also applied to relationships how do you want to feel do you want to feel safe do you want to feel excited maybe a little bit of both um so um that is what it's all about so it's really um, a kind of fantasy writing, but it's really fun because it's kind of like writing a wish list or a letter to the universe about, about all the things you want. But you can never say the word want because want is like saying, I don't have. So it's very sim similar principles to the law of attraction. So we are imagining that we already have the, de the, de the thing that you desire. And so it's, it's living as if, writing as if and really connecting to the gratitude and the emotions involved and getting very clear with all the details in there. Something else that I found about this technique is, let's say when you are going through something difficult, let's say you lose a job or you lose a relationship or you something is quite challenging in your life. Um, when you um, journal about the ideal situation, let's say, let's say it's work um, and then you know, you get very clear about what you want as you are writing, because you're writing the ideal version, like the ideal day, the ideal clients, the ideal pay, the ideal collaborators, and things like that. And there's nothing, there's nothing that's off limits. And then when you are writing, you're going to feel the emotion, and that's going to go into your into your creation as well. And then when you have that um, writing or the record of that, and then you get other job offers. You can kind of compare and say, is this this? No, 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 no. So you've got this kind of blueprint of what your ideal work life is or relationship life, etc. So that, that can be very, very powerful in terms of creating your own boundaries and your own self-love. So it's kind of like getting intentional about your own life design, which is really, really exciting. Yeah, so um, that's a little bit about um, the power of journaling. I'm doing journaling every morning now and I'm finding it to be very healing and I'm very excited about my life right now. There's just so many things coming my way 
And I do think journaling does help me to get into that frame of mind of uh, being receptive to the gifts because I'm really focused on what I want and um, and trying to magnetize it. I don't really like the word try. I'm going to make another video about words that I don't use anymore. Try is going to be one of them. Yeah, so that is all about the Barcelona Journaling Weekend. And um, well, check out the website for more so you can hear about the or read about the other speakers, etc. But if you want to come to Barcelona, you want to come attend my workshop and meet me and, and talk about anything else, then this is a great way to um, explore Barcelona meet me and learn all about the power of journaling. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with some more videos. Mwah.